Hi, I am Helen Miles and welcome to my first ever demo video. There will be hiccups on the way with myself blocking the camera at certain points as I only have one camera at the moment but somehow we will get to the end of the video. As you can see, this is the look I am demoing. The video should give you an idea on how to make non-professional cheap character prosthetics on a budget. If you want a professional realistic movie look, then please view other videos, demos and tutorials. If you do not mind a rough finish, this may help you with a creative project. This video is aimed for people who cannot afford or have space for making professional prosthetics. For example, for foam latex, you need a separate oven from that of which you cook with. For both silicone and foam latex prosthetics, you will need to make casts and moulds, which can be very expensive. For silicone um, prosthetics, you would also need special glues um, to stick the actual prosthetics to the body. Silicone glue is extremely expensive. If you're going to do these looks again, it might be worth investing the money. But for one off fun look, you do not want to spend hundreds of pounds for one night. The method I am showing you isn't the only method for cheap prosthetics. This is just one way. There are plenty of other ways of making cheap prosthetics with liquid latex and gelatine and other products. Now the intro's over, let's crack on. Equipment for this look. Ah, it's so long. So we need a table. We need floor and table covers because this is a very messy technique and if it gets into carpet or fabric um, you're not going to get it out again. You also need containers for latex because we're going to be mixing some colours into our latex later. You're also going to need a fork and spoon for mixing, liquid latex, some flour, a head. This could be a cast of your model, it could be a sculpture's head, it could be a beauty head, it could be even a polystyrene head covered in resin. Um, we also need some silk clay, some modelling tools, some talcum powder, brushes for applying talc, disposable sponges for applying latex. We also need craft knives, we also need some makeup brushes and sponges, we also need some thin ether foam. We could also do with a hot glue gun and some glue sticks. Um, we need some liquid paint to put in our latex. It could be yeah, body airbrush paint. It could be poster paint. Um, we need some paint for this latex. We also need um, some makeup, body paint, grease paint, whatever you're going to put on your model yourself once you've made your prosthetics and apply them. You could use an airbrush. Um, we can use airbrush with our latex. Um, we can use airbrush yeah, for your makeup. If you want to, if you don't have airbrush, you can sponge things on and no use normal brushes. Um, we need some body glue. We need some like Prosade, Spirit Gum, Mastic, and we need some removers. Um, we also will need some costume elements, um, some crepe hair if you want to, which is already steamed, and we I've put lollipop sticks because that's how I apply it. Um, it's up to you if you're going to use this crepe hair or not. Um, you can have some teeth, so DIY or bulk teeth, some scissors, old makeup brushes, which can be destroyed. Woo! So yes, please also wear aprons and masks and anything else for this. Um, I have got some more equipment in my safety procedures. So let's move on. Safety guidelines. Before you begin, please do the following. You need to do a patch test on your model yourself for latex allergies, posade allergies, mastic allergies, and makeup paint you will be using, and the removal products. 
please Google patch tests and how to do them if you have never done a patch test before. Please wear old clothes when working with latex as it does not come out of fabric. Um, you can also wear aprons and anything else to protect yourself. Uh, work in a well-ventilated area as latex contains ammonia. And wear a mask with filters if you've got one. Um, this is not dust filters. This would be chemical gas and fume filters if possible. Um, also, because if you're using an airbrush, please wear a mask or goggles over your face and to protect your eyes when using the airbrush. If you or your model feel unwell or develop any allergy signs at any time, stop what you are doing. Remove any makeup, glues, latex, etc. Move to an area with fresh air and seek medical advice. How long it took me to do this look? Well, believe it or not, it took me four and a half hours. The thing that took the most time was waiting for the prosthetics to dry. So what I did while it was drying was pre-paint my prosthetics with coloured liquid latex. Um, application time with these pre-painted prosthetics is going to take around about two hours because I've added crepe, crepe air to it. Um, so that was my additional time of one hour if you're not adding crepe air, it's not going to take you as long if you've pre-painted your prosthetics. Let's begin. Woohoo! Making of the face prosthetic. I'm using today a rough plaster cast of our model's face, which I've covered in wood glue resin to make it easier to clean up afterwards. If you have not got a plaster cast, you can use a mannequin head, a sculpture's head, or even a polystyrene head if you can cover it in varnish or wood glue first. Because I want certain elements of my prosthetic to be stiff, I'm using silk clay to create these structures, and then I blend these structures into the cast. If you are doing a nose similar to mine, but do not have a plaster cast of the model, you will need to make a silk clay cup first, which can fit over the model's nose and the nose shape. Then you will need to leave this cup to dry for 24 hours and then do the process I am doing with the clay cup on top of the head you are using. Once you have done your silk clay elements, you can leave to dry for 24 hours before the next step. Roll, 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 roll that silk clay out, Helen. Go on, keep rolling. You're going to make two little sausages to stick onto this nose. There we are. And just press down. And look, it stays in place. Now for the other side. Yeah, simple as that. Ooh, what are you making here, Hedden? You make a little trunk. Oh, it's the tip of the nose. Yep. Oh no, just move them out of the way. Just move them bits out of the way. You don't need them bits there. Great, just shape that little tip of the nose. Look how easy this clay is to work. I think that's enough time watching at this speed. Let's speed things up, or as we're going to be here for hours. Can we go? Mm. 
No, didn't like this bomb. I must start again. What was wrong with it? Oh. Oh, you wanted to make the big frame first, Helen. Okay. So, you're going to mould this lovely heart shape for this nose. There we are. And then... You're just going to come and do this heart shape. Okay. Oh, a bit of tools come out there. Or are you going to build at the back of it? You're going to make this heart shape a bit more solid so it doesn't collapse. Well done, Helen. A mortal work? Wow. Oh, don't forget the more detail. More detail going into that nose. Lots of these little sausages going on here to make this look. Oh yes, you've got some nose holes, you've got some nostrils. Your model can breathe now. The most important thing about doing a nose, making sure your model can breathe. Keep your head out the way, Helen. Yep, making sure they can breathe. You get your knife in there very sharp, but get that knife in there. Make sure there's air holes. There we are, look at that. We have a nose! Woo! A bit more shaping going on here. More shaping. Get your head out of the way, woman! little fancy bits going on. Ooh, oh no, you didn't like them, okay. Now they're going back on. Would this woman move her head out the way of the camera so we all can see? Very good. And more tools. The yeah. ace. You like this one tool. Aha! Voila! My nose is done. It's quite rough. Um, don't worry, it's going to be covered in latex. So it's got a couple of folds in it. We don't need it completely smooth because this is going to be all covered up and. Uh, more layers of latex you do, the less detail you get pick up from the foam. Look at your shoulder out of the way. We want to see what's going on. All right, she's doing the little ridges on the nose. You can't see these, but these are on the top of the nose. Oh, we've got an eyebrow going. Fantastic. So yeah, so we've got some eye detail going. Um, please make sure you do not join the eyes to the nose because you will never get this off the mannequin in one piece otherwise, or off your head in one piece. Um, to make sure there is a gap between, so you can put latex between the eye and the nose. Do not join the eyes and noses together. It also allows the prosthetic to be a little bit more flexible. Um, so, if your model does change their face like, slightly, um, it has some give. Helen, you need to invest in more cameras. You keep getting in the way. Can't see anything. I'm sorry, guys. I only got one camera. Oh, 
hopefully I will move soon out of the way so you can see what's going on. But I may sculpt her in the eyes and blend it into the face cast of my model. For the eyes, I have blended the silk clay into the head as much as I can below the lower lid. And for the upper lid, I have made a hood. This is a DIY prosthetic, and because my model is of the age where skin is not smooth, and he has big male eyebrows, having a thin edge for blending seamlessly would be extremely hard with this type of prosthetic around the eyes. Once done, leave the silk clay to dry for 24 hours. Can you tell when I give an instruction, I go very serious in my speech and very slow. I am really sorry, I don't know how to make the pictures go any faster in Premiere Pro, as it is my first time using this program. Cover the whole head and the silk clay in a thin layer of liquid latex. Use a sponge or airbrush to do this. Be sure to cover the eye sockets in liquid latex to create a blendable edge if so desired. Leave to dry and then repeat. For the rest of the prosthetic, make sure not to put any more latex on these areas where you want the edges to be blendable. Make sure to latex the edges where the silk clay meets the head you are working on. It was that slow, serious voice again. Okay, Helen, keep sponging. We're going to get all them nooks and crannies. So sponge, sponge, sponge. Um, if you're going to use airbrush, you're going to get a much smoother finish. But we are going to sponge because we're going to be using latex paste. There are other methods to making simple um, prosthetics, but we're trying to create a lot of volume with our prosthetics, so we're using latex paste today. Um, we're going to end up with a very, very textured um, look. Um, so if you want a smooth look, this is not the look for you, um, or not the technique for you. Come on, Helen, keep sponging. I love the fact the silk clay, when you sponge over it and let the latex dry, it goes way more yellow than the face cast. So, yes, Helen, we're going to wait. The latex is dry. What next, Helen? Now mix a very thin latex paste. This is liquid latex mixed with a small amount of flour. This is not rocket science. There is no exact quantity or ratio for this bit. Helen, you can do better than that. Basically, we're going to mix this and um, it's going to be like a grainy milk. Just keep mixing, Helen. Keep mixing, keep mixing. So we're just going to have lumps. You're never going to get rid of the lumps. This is, you know, not one of them sort of solutions where it's not going to be grainy. Just keep mixing, just keep mixing, just keep mixing, just keep mixing, yeah! We are going to sponge the paste all over the prosthetic, get it into all the nooks and crannies and to give texture to the silk clay also.
As you can see, I removed the latex on the chin as I wanted this to be a separate prosthetic. Don't worry, Helen, we all do a whoopsie sometimes. None of us are perfect. I am now adding some of the thin paste to build up the brow and the forehead. Do you remember the beginning of this video? I said that this was a messy process. You now can see why. You have to use your fingers and forks and tools to mold that latex paste. Use that latex paste to blend the silk clay with the latex. Make sure there's no gap between the latex and the silk clay. Well done Helen, you spotted a place on the nose. I am now trying to fill the edges between the head and the silk clay to make it seamless as possible. Hang on Helen, I just said that. Oh, typical. Now it is time to dry this layer of latex. Yes, yes, Helen, I think we all know how to dry latex of a hair dryer. It is now time to make some thick moldable liquid latex paste. This is two parts liquid latex to one part flour. About time Helen, it's the fun stuff now. Different types of flowers give you different types of finishes. So some of the textures you may get will be smoother, others will be thick like oatmeal. You may want to try different types of flowers and it might give you a different skin finish. Get some normal liquid latex ready to hand as this is the part where we're about to apply the moldable latex paste. Put the latex paste on the areas you require bulk and roughly shape with your fingers or tools. Look how much thicker this um, paste is compared to the first one. I'll remind you what it is. It's one part flour, two parts liquid latex.
I'm avoiding the eye sockets and the um, lids because I do not want it to have a lot of texture. I just wanted a little tiny bit of texture from the thin paste. I'm now going to start moulding the brow. So I'm adding some more bulk and using them fingers, the best tools in the world. There we are. We've now got a raised area. We're not aiming for detail, we're just aiming to get the bulk there and some basic shapes. Every one of my fingers now must have a bit of latex on it somewhere. Helen, will you get that big head out of the way? Look at them cheekbones going on. Now with some liquid latex on your finger, gently smooth the areas. Remember this technique will not give you a smooth surface. If an area is not smoothing, apply more liquid latex to your finger. That's looking better already. You can see the contouring much better now. Remember Helen to make them edges thin, we want a blendable edge, thin them out. Yep, smooth them lush cheekbones out Helen. And there's that big head again. Oh, Helen, what have you done now? Here I'm just showing you that you can make ridges, but I will remove these as soft line work I find better with what I am going to do later if the area of paste has enough bulk. As you can see, you've got lots of time to play with this um, latex paste. Just don't make it too thick. If it's too thick, you're going to have some hard lumps in it. Um, basically, it's just a collection of flour, which you won't be able to manipulate that easily. But as you can see, you can play around with it for quite a long time. Isn't Helen nice? She's doing all this to show you this technique and she's going to rub this out and show you a different technique to make these ridges.
You can use tools to draw rough line work. As you can see, this line work is very rough. And this is why I'm going to show you a different technique for this. As you can see, Helen's favourite tool is back out. From the lovely Primark, it's, a, it's for your fingers to push that nice cuticle in your fingers down. But Helen likes using it as a sculpting tool. And I think we're done with this bit of the demonstration. We're going to rub this out. Yeah, just rub it and smooth it back out. So you've got loads of time to adapt your design with this technique. If you have any questions, you are allowed to contact me um, via any of the links I have on this video. As you can see, I've chosen not to have a blendable. A mouthpiece on this prosthetic as it will overhang my model's lips. Now my preferred method for gentle line work and shaping. Dry the latex paste so it has a thick skin. You then can use tools to put impressions in the paste and move the paste underneath the skin. I know it's not the best camera angle, but I hope you can see me indenting um, into this skin and pushing the latex um, underneath the skin. And you can create some pits and falls with this technique. I think we're just about done with the face. Woohoo! Making a chin prosthetic.
I left the face to dry overnight before making the chin. The chin prosthetic is done the same way as the face. I just covered the face with cling film, so I do not drop any latex onto the face as latex loves sticking to latex. Let's speed things up in a bit because we've already done these techniques when we did the face. Apologise again for my big head being in the way. But as we've done these techniques before, I'm sure you will forgive me. I do advise in future removing the face cast but for this demo I kept it on so you can see what it was going to look like but I would suggest removing it so it fits better when you actually do the application later on and you can get a better shape than I did. What I mean by this is that you can get much more blendable edges because you'll have space to blend them and also you can make the lips uh, of your prosthetic go over the top of your model's lips if you have enough space. But for this demo I, did just, I decided to show you the whole process and what the face would look like with a bottom jaw. Just look at that chin cleft head and it's giving this prosthetic. This creature's gonna have a massive chin. It's gonna be bigger than a normal human's chin. We are exaggerating all the features for this creative creature look. Remember to apply liquid latex on your finger so you get to smooth out the chin. Just keep applying that liquid latex and you'll get a smooth surface. But remember, it will not be completely smooth. Now dry, dry, dry that skin so we can actually put some impressions into the chin. This prosthetic will take two to three days to dry before it can be removed from the face cast. That's it. The chin is done. Just dry it off. Look at them dimples. Yeah. Now it's time to show you some little photos of what I have done. Dun, dun, dun. Making off the head prosthetic! Now for the head prosthetic. First talc a head, I use a sculpting head. But you can use a mannequin head, a ball cap head or a polystyrene head coated in glue. 
Yes, Helen, it is Tucker Powder. You do not have to do a 1980s style demo. Yes, we all know it's white powder. You do not have to apply as much tuck as Helen did. And she just wanted you to see the talc being applied on the head. Sponge on a thin coat of liquid latex in the same way you would do a board cap. Edges should cover the brow and go in front of the ears and down the neck and allow the latex to dry. Ensure the whole head is covered. You need to do four more coats of latex in the same way, but to graduate in, back up the dry latex to make a blendable edge. You don't want to go very big spaces, only a couple of mil between each coat as you go backwards. You can use a hairdryer to speed up the drying of the latex, but I always find if you want it smoother, without any sort of little tiny hair bubbles, just let it dry naturally. But for fast purposes, just heat it with a hairdryer. I use ether foam, which I cut into shape and hot glued gummed onto the latex to give me a base for my huge ear build but you can use card or paper Right, so I'm going to block the camera for most of this, but all I'm doing is going to be hot glue gunning these ears into place. Um, this is quite a fiddly thing to do. You're never going to get it completely flat, flat against the head, but you're going to glue it into place. We're going to cover the glue in latex anyway. It's just there to um, help this structure stay. And um, as you can see, this is going to take a little bit of time. So I've speeded up this bit of the video. There we are. And we're going to sort these ears later. Um, we're going to try and bend it with um, heat from the hairdryer. Um, and Helen will repeat this um, in her description. Look, Helen, we love your back. But can you move out the way again? Be very grateful. try to get these ears as symmetrical as possible as these are big ears and we want the headpiece to be as balanced as possible here I'm just going to use a hairdryer to give a bit more curve to my ether foam
I'm just adding some more base structures to add latex to. These will look better once we add some latex paste to these little ear structures. They're just there to give us a base structure. As you can see, I've completed one ear so you can see what it's going to look like. Let's do the other ear. Here's one I made earlier. A Blue Peter reference. Woohoo! Let's mix some more of that latex paste. Yeah. We're going to get messy real soon. As you can see, Helen is wearing a mask. She's in a well-ventilated area because we're here for a very long time and ammonia smells really pungent. And I mean pungent, it smells of cat wee. And I don't really want that in my lungs for a very long time. Ammonia is nitrogen and hydrogen atoms. And it's a byproduct of bio waste in the human body, animal bodies. And it can be found in water, soil and air. at last it's changing the camera angle hopefully you're gonna get a better view maybe a little bit more of a close-up who knows let's find out let's coat the foam in liquid latex for a coat Let's make our fixed latex paste again, which is two parts latex, one part flour, and we're just going to apply this on the same way as you did for the chin and for the face prosthetic. Helen's got her latex paste out again and she's going to cover all them joints where we joint the foam to the head and cover all them little holes and use that structure to make the ears more interesting. Just keep applying that latex paste. Make sure you cover all the ears. Don't worry that the ears flopping over. 
because as you're going to be drying this here, the ATEX will harden in position eventually. And um, Helen will tell you what she did later on to keep the ear nice and stiff when it dried. But yet, the aim is just to cover every part of this headpiece with this paste. And every now and then, use the hairdryer to help dry that ear into place. Use a hairdryer to hair dry the latex into place. If needs be, lay down your head backwards and hair dry the latex into place and leave the ear to dry and this should hold it in place. All I did here was cut loads of ether foam up and hot glue gunned it to the latex on the inside of the ears. I then coated the ether foam in liquid latex for two coats. It is a good idea when you have done your coats of liquid latex is to get a hair dryer and hair dry the liquid latex in position and giving the ear a little bit extra support while it dries. The foam is quite rough. Um, the more latex you apply to this, um, the softer the edges become. Um, because we're going over the top and by going over the top of something you start losing the detail. Now just blend everything together. I scattered a thin layer of the latex paste on the inside of the ears and the ridges to make the um, design a little bit more organic and um, so the face of the design will actually stand out more than the ears um, because then ridges are quite sharp compared to the rest of the design. Now let your prosthetics dry once they're complete and you're ready to paint them. The fun part, colouring the prosthetics. Helen uses an airbrush to paint her prosthetics. Her solution is basically 
liquid latex mixed with body paints, body art airbrush paints. And you can use any liquid paint and mix it in with that liquid latex and put it through an airbrush. Just remember to unclog the end as the air um, the latex dries at the end of the airbrush. As you can see, it goes on quite well for an airbrush. But if you haven't got an airbrush, you can sponge this on. Um, Helen has in the past sponged on um, the same solution. And yep, yeah, it will still work. You just got to be aware if you're using any brushes and um, sponges, these are going to be ruined by the latex and you'll never be able to use them again. Look at that lovely, lovely dark red colour Helen's using. And she's going to be using quite a lot of this colour to make these ears a lot darker. Because the more layers you have, the darker the latex becomes. Helen is using the same um, airbrush colours and paints she's going to be using on the model where we do the application so she gets a flawless finish. Um, so if you want a flawless finish, it's always worth using a cosmetic liquid paint um, because then you can blend it seamlessly and the paint colours will match. So the first couple of um, coats we're putting down is just the base colour, we're just making sure everything is covered with the base colours. So obviously you can see the ears, we're at red on the inside, and we're going sort of like a flesh colour on the rest of the prosthetic. I'm only going to be showing you how to do the um, head prosthetic and the face prosthetic I'm going to be doing off camera, because you only need to be shown this sort of once or this video is going to be very very long so Helen's now starting to build up some colours and some folds and she's going to use the natural folds in the foam to actually create all these little contours Helen is not using any black in this shading she's going to be using a dark brown and a very dark green and she also is going to be using a lilac to create some little fanes. The lilac is going to be such um, a pale colour and when it goes on it will just look like little brown lines with a hint of purple. Um, I don't mean a pale colour, I mean it's got very very little pigment in it. That's what I mean. <laughs> As you can see, Helen's put a little bit of brown and a bit of red all over the body just to give it a bit more dirty look. And now she's going in with a dark brown just to give the ridges some shadows and also you can start to see that the um, ether foam ridges are now becoming a little bit softer, they're not as harsh. As I've done this for demo purposes, um, I just cut this either foam on the ears quite quickly, um, so they're not even, but it's just to give you guys an idea, because this is not a professional look. Yeah, a bit more dirty. There we are, we're drawing the fanes on now, and I'm just mopping up little bits, because if it's got a bit too much or a bit of splat I don't want, I'm just trying to get rid of that latex as quick as I can. But this little lilac colour, which you can't see at the moment, is going to fade, because there's not much pigment in um, this solution. I've kept it quite translucent. So it just creates a sort of shadow, but it adds a little bit of depth. As you can see in the back of the ears, oh, there we are. You can just see on the right here at the back there's some fade work. And then got a camera out, she took some pictures for you guys. Um, so at the end of this little, little time lapse, you'll see some videos and hopefully some close-ups. Um, the head is done very roughly. There's no smoothing at all to this head. It's really, really rough because we are focusing mainly for this look on the face.
see what their face is going to look like. Uh, there's quite a lot of detail going into this. See them ridges we worked on earlier, them indentations, and a little bit of fame work there. And the skin texture, how I achieved that was actually do some splattering to get them little speckles in the brown and the green. We're moving the prosthetic from the face cast and the head. First I dust talc powder all over the prosthetic just so it doesn't stick to itself as I remove it. As you can see what I do is use a brush with a bit of tack and brush underneath the prosthetic and all over the prosthetic to get it off. Um, Cause latex does stick to itself. Be very gentle with this bit. I'll do the edges first. And I gradually work inwards. If you don't want to use talcum powder, you can use things like corn flour. It will work, but it will be a bit grainy um, if you leave it on the prosthetic. What you get now is, as you remove it, the eyes and the silk K will come out. You just push them back into your prosthetic and then just attach them in with a body glue like spirit gum or prosade and then cover the edges with latex so it should hold it in place so i'm just checking the eyes it is very important when you do do eyes and nose and that that you do not join the eyes and the nose together if you are doing the sockets as well as the nose in silk clay if not you will not get the um, latex off the actual face cast oh yeah, i am sorry you didn't see me actually remove the whole thing oh it's because my camera did stop I didn't realise. But yeah, don't get scared that um, the silk clay doesn't come off with the actual prosthetic. You just have to actually stick it back in and they take it back in. Also remember when you do apply your um, prosthetic is to actually use a wet wipe or something to get rid of all the talc on the outside or you're going to have a very white powdery look to your photos. Yeah, voila, done. I'm just painting the inside of the eye sockets um, just to make sure um, that you don't see any white in the photos at different angles. It's always worth doing and then I'm just going to coat that paint with a bit of latex just to seal it in there. Nothing worse than you take an angle and you can actually see a white line on the inside of a prosthetic because you can't get 
to it. Do the exactly the same with the head. We're just gonna apply all that tail coil over. So another latex sticks to each other when we actually start removing it and folding it upwards. It's not gonna the back of the neck's not gonna stick to the head or anything. And then we're gonna use the brush and work that brush underneath the actual edges and gradually work inwards. I tend to start with the edge which is not going to rip first. Don't worry if the edge is very jagged, as long as it's thin it's blendable. You're actually better off with a jagged uh, edge to blend with than you are with a clean straight cut. So don't worry um, that some bits look a bit holy. This actually is better to blend with when it comes to latex. What you can see me do in a moment is grab the ears and gradually wiggle them to release the ears from the head and create and release that suction um, which is holding the latex in place. And it will come off in one, believe it or not, when that happens. But first, we've got to loosen everything around the ears as much as possible. There we are. Starting to tug them and it's going to gradually go back and it's off. Voila! The application process. Here's my lovely dad as the model. We're just going to apply this lovely head fit first. I'm just checking here um, that he's in the right place. And we're using some Prosaid here to stick down our cap. Um, you need to put the Prosaid on the latex as well as on the skin and let it go see through and then push the both edges down hard onto the skin to make it firm in place. And there we are, we're gonna do a bit on the back as well. There we are, and we're gonna tuck this rest in because we're gonna wear a big shirt so we don't need the whole back bit to be glued down. But we're gonna glue down the sides of the neck. A little bit of trimming going on there too. Okay, so we're going to use some liquid latex, not paste, liquid latex to go along the edges of this cap. And we are going to do roughly four coats along the edges. So what I do is wait for a little bit to go clear and then I'll reapply a bit of latex. And because we've got a face prosthetic going over the top of this, um, we don't really need a very, very, very um, blended edge, just enough, just in case the prosthetic doesn't cover that edge. You see the bit? I'm going to be colouring the eye sockets, the nose and the mouth, because once the prosthetic goes on, I won't probably be able to reach most of these areas. My dad's got very ticklish eyes, so I can't do the waterline with my dad. And then he can get so far towards the eye. So I've applied Posade all around his face and the inside of the prosthetic. And now I'm firmly placing it into the area and trimming anything which overlaps too much of the main head prosthetic. I'm going to use liquid latex to blend the edges of this face prosthetic into the head prosthetic. So I'm just going to like use the prosade here just to get these edges down before I put this latex on. 
There we are, latex. And I'm going to sponge this on with a latex sponge. And every now and then you see me use a cotton bud to hold a bit and dry a bit into place, which picks up. There we are. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do about four coats. If you do have a thick edge, you can use a bit of latex paste to help you blend the edge. Um, you see, um, like I mentioned earlier, when we did the chin making of, um, because I did it for this demo and so you can see what the face was going to look like, it doesn't quite blend on the sides as much as I want to because I left quite a thick edge. Um, so after I've done this application, I had to go back with some paste and make some thin edges to try and blend them out for the pictures. Um, but yeah, so that's a bit I would do again if I was doing it not for demo purposes. And you'll see I will remove the teeth from this prosthetic because I decided to put top teeth and inside the upper prosthetic because I didn't actually glue down the um, upper lid so I can just slide in some false teeth between his normal lips and the prosthetic lips. So I'm just going to remove these little tusks because I actually um, found some lower teeth I made. So if I was doing this chin again I wouldn't do it on the same head cast um, at the same time as the face. And I probably would have made the lips a bit longer to blend it in a bit better and I could stick this prosthetic over his lips um, just to make it look a little bit better because I made a little job um, blending the sides of this as you can see I spent quite a long time trying to build up the layers of latex and get him to open his mouth and dry it with his mouth open if you are going to use a hairdryer to try and dry your latex on a model make sure it's on a cold setting do not put it on a hot setting because um, we don't want to burn our model and also it's quite hot inside one of these little um, you know head caps and they do sweat and they will sweat off glue and they will sweat off the latex eventually um, because yeah it's water at the end of the day or sweat urine whatever you want to call it and it will and dissolve some of these glues they make some um, sticky so I'm just airbrushing everything blending the actual prosthetics in and using the same um, colors I used in the liquid latex to make the prosthetics You're going to see a video at the end where we think we're finished and actually we're not finished because we need to apply some crepe hair so we got a bit too excited a bit prematurely um, but there we are that's what it looks like As you can see, the model's quite comfy in this. He can move his head. Let's go right in and zoom in. So you can definitely see there's a bit about the chin I mentioned. It's not that bad on um, one side, one side's worse than the other, but I correct this later on um, off camera. So this is where you see the edge, the edges, you look at the side in a bit, there we are. That's how seamless our edges are at the side. In, so the edges which go into the other prosthetic are quite seamless. There's a little bit at the top, but I think that's more that. No, it is actually seamless, it's just texture. That's okay. Yay, we finished. We haven't. So I'm now going to apply clay pair. Um, so what I'm going to do is put a bit of Mastic or Spirit Gum in the areas I want to apply this clay pair. It's quite messy to apply. So what you do is a little bit at a time, 
I get a stick or a lollipop stick and I just put the crepe pad next to it and then pull back with the applying some pressure with a lollipop stick on the prosthetic. So doing the back I start the base then work myself up. So I'm going to ask him to turn around now. So I've done my plan. So I'm going to apply a bit of spirit gum and dab it because the contact adhesive we need to make it sticky before we have put the hair on. There we are, it's getting tacky. So I didn't put much glue on the back of this prosthetic um, when we applied it because I do want him to take it off um, about 10 minutes after we applied it, after we've done all the photos. Um, that didn't happen, I had to go and do some mouth bits and blend the mouth a little bit more in off camera and so um, but it did its job, it did it, yeah, it stayed on because we weren't going to take any pictures of the back, it was mainly of the front. If you don't want to wrinkle, when you apply the head prosthetic, make sure you put some glue on the um, base of the head. Those of you who have seen this crepe, it comes in a big roll and it's all crinkly and you have to steam it off. Um, don't try and just pull it off the bit of string, you actually have to steam it and it will unravel because it's all crinkly and it will unravel um, with steam and become straight. But as you can see, this is how I'm applying it. I've got three colours. I've got um, a light brown, a mid brown and a dark brown. I said we're not using any black for this look. So you start the base. And I don't really fully coat it. I still want to see the colour underneath. So these are just little straggly bits of hair. It just creates a little bit more of an interest to the piece. And... Um, a bit more realistic because I don't think bats and vampire bats are hairless um, in my opinion you might have a different opinion so yeah so I think a vampire should have some hair but as he's an old vampire um, he might have some hair falling out but he would have a little bit of hair because even mummies and dead things, the hair still grows um, as long as you've still got skin and got enough um, hair follicles still active. I'm not going to cover it all over, I'm just going to cover in bits and bobs. If I was doing sideburns or something, um, these layers would be quite close together because obviously sideburns would be quite bushy and quite thick. I've not even trimmed the sizes of this. I just want it to be natural, straggly, that it's come out of a grave and his hair's grown all over the place at any rate. Well done for making it this far in the video. I know some bits were quite boring and um, some bits you couldn't see a lot, but well done. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the music. I hope you enjoyed the commentary. And you can always contact me, remember, um, after this video and any of the links I've put at the end of the video, at the beginning of the video. And if you like my stuff, give me a follow, give me a like. Uh, give me some comments on any of my work and if you like these videos I'll try and make better ones in the future and put it on my YouTube channel hopefully with more camera angles and hopefully with a camera person um, but if you find it useful and you liked it give me a comment give me a message and let me know
The finished look. Woohoo! We're there! There you have it. Um, a very cheap prosthetic. Uh, but it's textured. It's not movie standard. But for a party, uh, for a budget thing, it is great. It's great fun and it gives a, a model a great experience um, because they don't realise what actors go through. And yeah, my dad actually loved this afterwards. He loved being in front of the camera. There's some close ups of the hair going on there. And I think yeah, adding hair just gives it a little bit, bit of dimension, a little bit more fault. Um, to the piece. Yep, so I hope you like this look. Hope you like the video. Um, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to leave you some pictures and things at the end and some links and the credits. But thank you once again and please, please do give me a follow. If you would like to follow me, you can find me on Facebook, Whimsical Sorceress, Instagram, Whimsical underscore Sorceress, Twitter, Whimsical MUA, YouTube, Whimsical Sorceress, and www.whimsicalsorceress.co.uk.